Hayden here from Arsenal Pass for fabtcg.com and today we've got two dig ticks for you from our Dynasty Blitz gameplay series from myself and Brendan covering our budget decks in the form of Azalea and Katsu. Check them out. Hey everyone, it's Hayden here from Arsenal Pass on the Fab TCG YouTube channel here for a dig tick, a budget friendly dig tick for this Blitz gameplay series featuring Dynasty that Brendan and myself from Arsenal Pass are doing, running into each other with some great games. And uh, one of the decks that I'm playing in this event is Azalea. And I'm pretty excited. I think there's a, you're going to see in front of you a lot of new cards with Azalea. And uh, of course, the, the main one being this Sand Scour Great Bow. This is what this particular Azalea deck is built around. Now, some really cool cards in Dynasty. This aim counter mechanic and the ability for Sand Scour to potentially put a card into play off the top of your deck as opposed to your hand, you know, paying one resource, effectively drawing a card really really powerful now that's not gonna happen all the time sometimes you have to play a card from hand but this deck is set up to take advantage of that and take advantage of that azalea ability which is going to give stuff dominate and we know with these aim counters there's some really great on hit effects there so you can see in front of you equipment of course sand scale great bow that's what this deck is built around but then we've also got some access to cards that are going to help us enable sort of these bigger turns push damage and really help us out there snapdragon scalers we're generally going tall with our arrows because we've got some non-attack actions we're going to talk about. But sometimes we want to go wider. We do also have Bolton shots for that. But, you know, maybe we want to come with a Red in the Ledger and a Sleep Dart. Two on hit effects in one turn and Snapdragon Scales is going to help us out with that. Blossom of Spring, one of the most powerful pieces of equipment, I think, in this format. Just one resource when you need it. You know, Tunic, you have to wait three turns. Uh, Blossom of Spring immediately. So, card's very good. Talismanic Lens, that's going to help us uh, with our Azalea ability and with Sand Scale, Great Boat in the spots where we need it. You know, pop two cards, find the card we want on top. Potentially, sometimes we're going to go two cards on top. We're going to sand scour one of them into play, and then we're going to tuck that to the bottom with Azalea. Uh, so we can do some really cool stuff off like two card hands uh, and really powerful stuff as well. Bullseye Braces, that's going to allow us to take advantage of those Snapdragon Scalers because, of course, you know, we can only put one card into uh, as a once per turn action with sand scour. So Bullseye Braces is going to help us out on that, on that, uh, on that Snapdragon Scalers turn or potentially on a uh, on a turn where we just want to get that plus one and, and go over the top. And, of course, it does have Arcane Barrier. Then we do have some other sort of Arcane friendly equipment, I would say. Nurin Hood, Nurin Rube, and Spell Frey Leggings for the Kano. Got access to some defensive equipment as well in the form of Hornet Sting and Perch Grapplers. Mostly playing those where you do want to be defensive uh, for the defensive value. Otherwise, I think I tend to stick with this core that's just damage output. Get us to the best turns possible. And Hope Merchant's Hood is another option you can play. Uh, I, I like this into you know some of the um, some of the other aggressive decks potentially to just shuffle away really bad hands. Taking a turn off can really hurt you, so sometimes you do just want to like throw that hand away and get a new hand. All right, let's talk about the main of the deck here. You can see a lot of red arrows here and some red non-attack actions. That's the real meat of the deck. So a lot of uh, zero-cost arrows and some new ones there in the form of mobilizing shot. You know, uh, a really powerful on-hit effect there. We're always gonna. The cool thing about this deck and the cool thing about Sandscale Great Bow and Azalea is that. Azalea's ability is also going to mean that we get that aim counter because it is putting the card face up into our arsenal. So it doesn't work. Aim counter doesn't work really with reload, but it does work with that Azalea ability. So not only are you going to get the aim counter, you're just going to get dominate on those arrows. So if you set up some great arrows on top, something like an immobilizing shot, all of a sudden, immobilizing shot with dominate is really threatening and you're going to push through these on-hit effects. So you've got that. You've got uh, you've got drill shot. That's a new one as well. A great one that's going to sort of null some of that equipment out there. And then you've got just some of the classics, Red and Ledger, Sleep Dart, great on-hit effects, uh, Bolton Shot for, like I said, with going wide and go again, in this arrow, just always a powerful arrow that's going to allow you to keep threatening sort of great two-card hands. And then Hemorrhage Ball, which is another great card that has that on-hit effect, C and C on demand, basically, Command and Conquer on demand. So, And then we have these uh, these eight non-attack actions that are going to help us push the go-tall sort of aspect of the deck. So we've got Take Aim, Read the Glide Path, and uh, release the tension, which are cards you've seen before, all zero cost pump spells. And then we've got another zero cost pump spell in the form of point the tip. Now you could actually include some one class, uh, one cost pump spells because the way this deck works is if you pay one for your, your bow, you pay one for a non-attack action and you pay one to fire this arrow. You're actually, you know, you, you're using your blue there. So you could in, even include some of the one cost. I prefer to keep it zero cost so that when we do draw these, we can play multiple of them. And on that turn where we do want to snap dragon scales and go wide, none of those one costs are going to hamper us. Except for Deadeye, because this card is really, really powerful. New from Dynasty, aim counter. Give us plus, if we do have an aim counter, uh, it's going to allow us to choose a card from an opponent's hand and force them to discard it. Look at the hand and discard a card, and it gives plus three. Great pump spell there at yellow that's going to do a lot of work for us. And like we see, really easy for us to get aim counters and trigger this and go to a with Dominate. So 
just huge. And then our blues, uh, we're just playing some pretty good value arrows in our blues. Uh, we do want to hit arrows off the top with Azalea and Sandscale. So even if it's blue, that's what we want. Ridge Rider shot, things like that are going to help us uh, opt to see more cards on top. So we Sandscale and a Ridge Rider, we get to look at the top card, make sure we know what it is for Azalea, and then knock the Death Whistle, which is going to help us do the same thing. All really revolving around Sandscale, Azalea, Dominate, go tall attack, but there are some avenues to go through. Like we talked in there, it's important to note cards like Read the Glide Path do have some uh, some good opt effects there. So if I was to take this deck and look at maybe you want to upgrade it, you want to pick this deck up and then go forward and upgrade it. I think the first thing that I would go and look for is the legendary Skullbone Cross Wrap. That's going to enable you to just do more of this Azalea and uh, Great Bro shenanigans, uh, you know, where you do end with an Arsenal at the end of turn, or you do take aim or something and reload. If I did that, I might try and get yellow take aims into the deck as well, because of course you can flip up that card and uh, and then Azalea it afterwards. But, you know, I think this deck as is, without putting too much into it, you can have a pretty solid deck. I think Fiend or Spring Tunic is something you could look at as well after that. But overall, I think this deck's very powerful and we're gonna run it in and see what we can do in this gameplay series. Hey everybody, Brendan Patrick from Arsenal Pass here, just doing a quick deck tech on the Katsu budget blitz deck I played in our video our video series for LSS. Um, so I've separated this out into three groups, sort of the Dynasty Crouching Tiger package, um, our standard attack action package, things you're going to be used to seeing, and then sort of this, uh, this like tech package. Okay, so what this deck is trying to do, as you can see, it's very, very red, right? So it's more of a Cheerios deck as it has been coined, right? So a lot of, a lot of zero zero cost, not pitching a lot of cards. That's why you see a very low count on the blue specifically. So you're actually not going to be swinging Kadachis too often. The idea is to come in with attack action after attack action, ideally utilizing four on a single turn um, to sort of overwhelm your, your opponent and be the aggressor in the matchup. When we talk about some of these new dynasty cards, <clears throat> the key cards are things like Tiger Swipe and Roar of the Tiger. Roar of the Tiger, absolutely one of the best cards you can be playing, right? buffs your Crouching Tigers, and you have things like Predatory Streak to go with that to just create these huge combat chains that your opponent, it's very hard for your opponent to deal with. And you top that off with a card like Salt the Wound. Um, it, it feels like those cards are sort of made to go in the same deck with each other. You have a couple turn one cards, right? You have like Blessing of Key, uh, which which can be good. Uh, it's not my favorite card, but it's fun to experiment with. And if you are forced to go on the play, you can see, you know, get a lot of value from that card. We have some we have some sort of combo toppers, right? Key Unleashed, Tiger Swipe. These are really important too because you can grab them off of Katsu's ability. It's what makes Katsu so powerful utilizing some of these new Dynasty Ninja cards. So getting into the attack actions here, very standard stuff, but kind of in the same vein, Double Strike, right? Just increasing those amounts of potential hit triggers, right, that can trigger the Salt Moon and make it super, super big. Uh, we have Scar for Scar, Ravenous Ravel, Solby Strike, 100 Wins, which is a really important card because you can actually grab it off Katsu's ability if you're needing to simply just go white, you know, maybe filter out one of those bad cards, uh, one of those zero cost blues you don't need at the time and go grab that 100 wins. Enlightened Strike, Snatch, and of course, Salt Wound. Salt Wound probably being one of the most important cards of this deck, definitely the most important attack action. So as we get over to the tech cards, Ancestral Empowerment is just going to be a good combat trick uh, that sort of replaces itself, also blocks for three in this deck. Even bigger than that, we play one. Um, just a very powerful card, right? Let's you opt three, and it's going to snag most of the things in your deck. Art of War, definitely our most powerful card. We will almost always be popping our Blossom of Spring for something like Art of War. Um, it's the most powerful thing you can do in this deck. Energy Potions as blues, but also to potentially play out, right? Ideally, you almost never pitch a card in this deck, so Energy Potion can facilitate you doing that if you want to play something like a Key Unleashed. And then if we're going over to the armor, we talked about the Blossom of Spring. Hope Merchant's Hood is our budget option. If you're going to upgrade this deck, the first thing that you should do, of course, is probably grab a Mask of Momentum. Uh, the, ninjas, the, the ninjas are more reliant on their equipment than some other classes because Mask of Momentum is so powerful, right? And with a deck like this, you're likely going to be threatening Mask of Momentum triggers more than once a turn, which is very, very powerful in Blitz. Outside of that, you got Snapdragon Scalers and Tearing Shuko, two cards which I absolutely think you can keep even when fully upgrading the stack. Uh, looking at the chest slot in terms of upgrading and potentially playing a non-budget version of this, I actually think Blossom of Spring is a very reasonable piece of equipment to use use and i don't think that you know fiendel spring tunic is better i think it's actually i, I would probably still play blossom of spring because you're likely never going to get a third counter on it unless your opponent's deck is very slow because this katsu deck specifically is extremely fast right and getting that value out of blossom of spring to pop off that art of war absolutely where you want to be
So that concludes the Katsu deck tech. Hope you all enjoy the deck. It's it's very fun to play. It's uh, it's quite easy too to pick up and just you know have a lot of success with. It's 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 aggressive. It forces your opponent to react to you, and I think that's absolutely you want to be doing in this sort of blitz meta. The dynasty cards are great. Crouching tigers are an awesome addition to Katsu. So yeah, let me know what you think of Katsu in the current blitz meta. Has it sort of has it re-entered a blitz? Is it on the main stage now that we have these new cards in dynasty? And let me know if you have any other ways of building the Katsu deck. Right. Is Crashing Tiger the way to go, or maybe do we stay in sort of this normal attack action or even combo card uh, sort of archetype? Thanks, everyone.